yes essence of religiousness indeed saying yes is very meaning it contains the very essence of all religions saying yes to existence is to be religious saying no is resistance conflict and egoism saying no is keeping your separation from the whole no keeps you aloof separate from the existence saying yes is merging melting into the whole saying yes is opening up just like a bud opens itself to the sun and becomes a flower the flower is the way of the bud to say yes to the sun and no the no is a closed state of mind and yes is an open flower the difference between no and yes is the difference between a dead and an alive person the person who lives in the dimension of no remains encapsulated in a windowless world where the sun and the rain and the wind cannot reach indeed god can go on knocking but even the sound of the knock will not reach no is such a dimension where love cannot reach the closed person who lives with no indeed lives in ego the greater the ego the less are the bridges between the person and the existence when the ego is total the person is completely enclosed and he lives in the prison of his own creation he cannot say yes to the moon and the trees indeed he cannot say yes to anything he has forgotten the phenomena of yes and even if he sometimes says yes his yes is nothing but a camouflage no i have heard a story about joseph stalin stalin molotov his foreign minister phoned him from uno his wife stalin's wife was sitting by his side while he took the phone call in response to molotov stalin said no 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 yes no the wife was surprised because stalin said no 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 yes no not by the nose so many knows she knew her husband perfectly well that he was a man of no he was one of the most egoistic men possible his name is significant stalin means man of steel he was not really a man but a steel man a machine a robot he was just natural no was just natural to him his wife was puzzled that between those four nos there was one yes she asked him can i ask you one question i do not want to interfere in your politics and what is going on between you and molotov and what you are saying just one thing and i have become very curious did you really say one yes amongst those four nos or did i miss hear you did you really say yes stalin replied yes i said yes the wife asked then one question more why did you say yes the reply of stalin is significant he said when i said three nos molotov asked did you say no what do i say to that i said yes meaning i said no 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 there are people who say yes only when it is nothing but a camouflage no 
this was a camouflage no. He said three times no. Molotov was not certain. So he inquired, did you say no? Molotov. The Stalin said yes. So here yes is a camouflage no. And there are also people, very rare, who can say no only when it is a camouflage yes. And these are Buddhas. Yes, sometimes they also say no, but their no is not a negative no. The heart of theirs no is yes. Yes is the essence of their no. When your wife or husband say no, rest assured there is yes at the heart of it. They are incapable of saying no. If they have to use the word sometimes, in certain circumstances, it really means yes. A man like Buddha can sometimes be very hard, but he is hard because of his compassion and love. George Gurdjieff was very hard on his disciples just because of his infinite compassion. Yes is very essence of religion and no the very foundation of irreligion. The atheist is not the one who does not believe in God. Indeed atheist is one who believes in no, certainly no. And theist is not the one who believes in God. Instead one who believes in his yes, because there have been theists like Buddha and Mahabir who do not believe in God. They never spoke of God. Yet where can you find more religious people than Buddha and Mahabir? And there are millions of people who believe in God and their life gives no indication of any religion any religiosity, any godliness or fragrance. They stink of religion, violence, hatred, jealousy and possessiveness. Flowers of love never blossom in their life. Yes is the very foundation of true religious life. Yes implies dropping of ego. Yes is coming out of the mind. Yes is trust. Yes means trust and trust is the beginning of meditation. Meditation means relaxing with ex existence. Unless you trust, unless you can say yes to existence, how can you relax? A person whose religion is no cannot trust and relax at all. People cannot relax because they are afraid. People cannot relax because they fear that if they relax, they may be cheated. People can relax only with those whom they trust. With a stranger in your room, you may not be able to sleep whole night. Who knows, he may cut your throat, who knows, he may steal your money and escape, and who knows what he may do when you are asleep. But with your wife or husband, you go into deep sleep because you can trust. The child can go with his father or mother anywhere. Even if father is going into fire, the child can go singing a song, dancing, inquiring, questioning, unafraid because he knows his hand in his father's hand. This trust is yes. Knowing that this existence is our mother, that nature is our source, it cannot be against us. <coughs> so
certainly it cannot be inimical to us. Seeing this and understanding this, trust arises spontaneously. Trust is the essence of religiousness. Trust is the essence of meditation. Then you can say yes. Then you can say Amin. And the word Amin simply means yes. And the moment you can say yes, you can relax. Meditation becomes natural and spontaneous. Without any effort, without any strain, without any tension, you start falling into spaces called meditation naturally and spontaneously. Indeed, such spaces are empty of rubbish but full of God, full of godliness instead. This space is empty of the world but full of something that you have never known before, full of light which is immaterial. It is full of fragrance which comes from nowhere. It is emptiness, yet a plenitude, emptiness and yet a fullness, but not negative. This inner space, pulsating trust is meditation. Indeed, meditation is the fragrance of trust. And when there is meditation, the seeing arises. This is what in the East is called darshan. Darshan means to envision, to see. And this is the actual word which has been translated into the West as philosophy. Philosophy is of a totally different nature. And when there is meditation, seeing arises. Darshan is born. The Indian aspect of philosophy, the envisioning. You become capable of seeing. Your eyes are so clear and pure that there is no cloud, confusion or thought. Your eyes are so perceptive and so penetrating that you can reach to the deepest core of the mystery of this existence. You can see through and through the person who is sitting in front of you that you can glimpse of the magic that surrounds you, the eternal magic. Buddha called this eternal magic as es dhamu sanantano. You can have a look into the inexhaustible law, the cosmic law. Nobody except a Buddha has a real understanding of yes. Remember, once you have a real understanding of yes, you have all that is needed for the journey to the other show. When you are ready to go to the other show, then and only then you are ready to go to the other show. Yes becomes the boat. This is and it is capable of crossing all storms that life may present to you moment to moment. Howsoever stormy the ocean may be, the boat of yes is capable of reaching the other shore. The other shore is the shore of trust. You have the boat of yes, then nobody can prevent you from reaching the boat. No one can prevent you from reaching. Once you start saying yes and learning how to say yes, you are bound to be surprised again and again. Every moment there is all. The places where you could say no before, now you are saying yes. You are bound to be surprised because there is no reason to say no. In the first place there was no reason to say no. Why did you say no in the first place your whole life? Just watch people and yourself. Almost 99% of no's are just out of the ego. 
and there is no other valid reason for this. You will wonder why I have been saying no all these years. The child wants to go and play outside. It is sunny. The birds are singing. The wind is blowing. And the butterflies and the bees are humming. And the child asks the mother, Can I go out and play in the garden? She says, Capital No. Without thinking and not even listening to what he is really asking for. Not even giving him a single thought, a moment's awareness. No simply comes automatically. And if it is as if it is built in, she has not thought, she has not looked at the child at all. She is not saying no to what the child has asked because she is going to say no anyways. And sometimes you will know the children say that it doesn't make sense asking the mother because anyways she is going to say no. And just remember this sentence. The child knows anyways the mother is going to say no. It has no reference to the it has no reference to the child. Instead, it has reference to her power trip, the ego, the ego trip. So many women do not really want to be mothers. They are not even worthy of being mothers, but they want to be mothers. They desire to be mothers for a totally different reason, not for the motherhood. Motherhood is a great meditation. Motherhood is one of the greatest arts. You are creating an alive being. The sculpturist is nothing compared to the mother because he will be creating only a marble statue. The painter is nothing. The poet is nothing. The singer is nothing. The musician is nothing because they will be playing with the strings and objects to create something. The mother is the greatest poet and the greatest painter and the greatest musician and the greatest sculpture because she is creating a consciousness, life itself. But women are not interested in motherhood. Their interest is totally wrong. Although they say that they would like to be mothers, really what they want is power. The woman feels very powerful when she has children because man has taken all other power trips from her. She is not allowed in the marketplace. She is not allowed to be in the church. And when you go to Israel, in, the church, in their synagogues, Women are not allowed in the main pavilion. They are allowed in the gallery upstairs. Even the Prime Minister of Israel, Mrs. Golda Meir, was not allowed. I have heard once Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi visited Israel and she and the Israeli Prime Minister Golda Meir had to sit down upstairs in the gallery because women is not allowed in synagogue. So too, in Sufi shrines, women are not allowed in the main pavilion. The place where there is shrine, maybe it is in a room, maybe in it, it is in a big hall, the women are not allowed there. Women are not allowed in mosques, they have a separate place. She is not allowed to be in the church. She is not allowed in the politics. She is not given any opportunity where, anywhere to have her ego fulfilled. Almost 90% of opportunities had been 
taken by the men women have been forced to live in the house and perform a subsidiary role irrespective of what is happening in the west now she has she can have only one power trip that is over her children hence and you remember she cannot dominate her husband if husband wants to go with the other woman at the most she can disown him she can refuse him any physical connectivity but she cannot do other than that but she can dominate the child she can control him hence the no is her we she has not listened she has not seen the child she had simply said no and it is absolutely meaningless if she had listened there was no reason to say no it is perfectly right when the sun is dancing outside why should the child remain in the house dark and dismal and when the wind is blowing outside the child should be allowed to dance in the wind the child should be allowed to dance to the dropping rain drops too but the mother rationalizes he may catch cold or he may fall ill that is why i am saying no but those are just rationalizations in fact each child has a birth right to dance in the rain in the wind in the sun it gives health it gives vitality it brings him closer to nature and closer to god but the mother forces him and takes him to the church or the, to the temple where he cannot see anything no god at all and where god is so much alive so much throbbing in nature the child would like to climb a tree it is such a challenge god is calling him from the tree from the top of the tree all children should be allowed to climb trees and the mountains they should be given all chances to accept all kinds of challenges they should be helped to move into danger they should be prepared not protected prepared to move into danger helped persuaded rewarded to move into danger because a man who knows how to move in danger is bound to stumble upon god sooner or later but the mother will say no the father will say no indeed there is no reason to say no and if you can avoid saying mechanical no's if sometimes there is really a reason to say no your no will have a positive value there it will not be negative the man who lives in the climate of yes the dimension of trust and certitude sometimes may have to say no but his no will no more be negative it cannot be vice versa the person who lives in the climate of no even if he says yes sometimes it is not positive it is not really yes it is only a disguised no its value is negative it is as if if your cup is dirty and you pour tea into it and your tea also becomes dirty if your yes is only a substitute for no if it is instead of no then it will have some qualities of no is still clinging to it but in the beginning it is bound to be so so do not be worried about it clean your cup a little more start saying yes for no reason at all just as you have been saying no up to now 
for no reason at all. It is one of the most beautiful chanting, far better than repeating Ram, Krishna, Jesus, Allah, far more beautiful, far more significant and far more meaningful will be to sit silently and repeat meaningfully, consciously, yes, yes, yes. It can be a far deeper going mantra than any other can ever be because Ram and Krishna and Jesus are far away. They are just like stories. You cannot really relate with them. The world has changed so much that they cannot be more than mere stories. But yes, can be a totally different matter. If you learn to say yes, you have opened an infinite reservoir. Jesus, Ram, Krishna, you will repeat mechanically. But saying yes, really meaning it, blowing, bowing down to the earth and saying yes, lying on the naked earth and saying yes to the earth, as if earth is mothering you, which it is, swimming in the lake and saying yes to the water, not only saying it but feeling it all over, every fiber of your being, every cell of your being, pulsating with yes, taking a sun bath and saying yes, not verbally, instead existentially, being in the mood of yes, receiving the sun, welcoming the sun and the sand and the texture of the sand and also the coolness of the breeze, welcoming all these gifts of existence that go on showering on you and you do not even feel grateful. Yes is gratitude. Gratitude towards the gifts from existence and no is ugly and ungratefulness. But in the beginning it is going to be so. Yes will be only instead of no. Your yes will be only instead of no in the beginning. But it is a good beginning. Slowly and slowly you will come to yes, which is slowly and slowly you will come to a yes, slowly and slowly you will come to a yes, which is not instead of no, slowly and slowly you will come to a yes, which is not instead of no but has its own roots into your being. This yes is emerging out of your own being. When that yes has happened to you, which has no reference to no, not that it is not only instead of no, but it has no reference to no either. It is not the opposite of no. It has no resounding of no at all. You have forgotten no, only yes exists, as if there is no opposite word to it. That is the infinite peak of yes, and that infinite of peak is bliss. Bliss is the ultimate peak of yes. In that moment, yes becomes prayer. In that moment, yes becomes bridge. Ego disappears, the separation is gone, one feels one with the whole, pulsating, singing and dancing. Yes indeed, yes is the ultimate peak. In that moment yes becomes the prayer, in that moment yes becomes the bridge, ego disappears and so too separation also, one feels one with the whole. Indeed, art is the same. 
seat of no is head and the seat of yes is heart they do not come from the same place they are utterly different in the dictionary they belong together but in existence itself they are utterly different different planes different dimensions of existence and the entire journey of spirituality is moving from the dimension of head to the dimension of heart heart is the dimension of yes head is the dimension of no and this is what sufi is called invoking the heart center and one who is heart center is invoked his inward journey has really begun an inward journey means the other shore he has found the other shore and yes is the door to reach to the heart heart is the very essence of your being and this is the meaning of the english word cross and the place where the horizontal and the vertical lines intersect one another we give it a beautiful name called sacred heart the time moves vertically along the horizon time moves moment to moment it is like swimming you are on to the surface moving from one moment to another one moment unfolds into the other and you are moving along the x axis and eternity moves vertically along the y axis eternity moves the dimension of yes is eternity the dimension of no is time no moves in time yes moves in eternity and where yes and no intersect one another that is sacred that is the essence the state of dimension of total emptiness the garden of eden inner flowering happens there only this much for this morning on this talk of